Hi, I'm Daniel with Polymath Classical Tutorials, and today I wanted to talk to you about six ways that we ruin math for our students. The first way we do this is by moving too quickly through the material. This might seem obvious, but it's easy to forget when we feel the pressures of a schedule, when we feel the tyranny of the urgent. And what we need to do instead is adopt a mastery mindset and remember that students should master the current lesson before moving on to the next. And when they don't do this, we're setting them up for frustration and failure later. Because of course, the concepts in mathematics build upon each other. So as much as possible, we need, uh, we need to make sure that our students have the resources and the time that they need to be able to truly master a lesson before moving on. And I, reala and I realize that that's not always the case. Uh, we don't always have that kind of luxury built into our schedule, but if we have the opportunity to actually create our own schedule for the year, we should create it with this in mind, understanding that uh, we need to build in time and space for review and buffer weeks to make sure that students don't get overwhelmed with new stuff and that they have the ability to really grapple with the material and master it before moving on to something new. The second way that we ruin math for our students is by requiring memorization without understanding. This happens because the concepts that we're teaching, uh, the ideas that we're teaching, the formulas that we're teaching often have complex proofs that take a long time to explain. And so the temptation is always, well, they don't really need to know how it works. They just need to know that it works and to memorize it. But when we do this, we're not really treating students like human beings, we're treating them like computers, and we're not requiring them to genuinely understand. This is very frustrating as a student. As students, students want to know and feel like they actually understand what it is that they're learning. And if we don't give them the opportunity to do that, then they feel disconnected from the material, and it's really frustrating. The third way that we ruin math for our students is the converse of this, it's to require understanding without memorization. This is not so common, but it's at least one that we need to be aware of in the classical education world because it's easy to err by extremes. And so if we understand just teaching formulas is bad because we're not showing where they come from, it's easy to err on the other side of things by uh, only teaching things to an understanding level without actually requiring them to memorize because students need to internalize these things. Math, just like any language, uh, has a grammar and a vocabulary that needs to be mastered. And without learning this, students won't really be prepared or able to be able to solve the problems that they need to be able to solve. Just like if you don't know the vocabulary and the grammar, you'll find it very hard to read in a foreign language. The fourth way that we ruin math for our students is by getting lost in the details. Just like someone who's in the middle of a corn maze can't see what the maze looks like from above because they're in the middle of it, and that's why they're lost, it's easy to do this to our students if we're not careful to always be showing students how what they're currently doing relates to where we've been and where we're going. Students should understand that there's something like a narrative to math, and it's our job as teachers to provide this for them so that they don't feel lost and disoriented and disconnected to the material that they're learning. So when they understand that there's a narrative and there's a trajectory and they can see how the current lesson fits in to a larger picture, uh, not only does it bring meaning to the current lesson, but it also motivates students um, 
by grounding them in the material and showing them that it's possible to genuinely understand what they're doing. The fifth way that we ruin math for our students is by forgetting history. It's, it's important not to leave out the human element when we're teaching. People are fascinating. History is fascinating. And when we don't include these things in our teaching, uh, the material becomes, well, a little bit dull. For example, don't you think students would be a lot more excited about irrational numbers if, <laughs> if you told them that, according to legend, the guy that discovered that irrational numbers existed was killed by his friends, who were all Pythagoreans, by the way, uh, because they didn't want the secret to get out. Because, <laughs> because the irrational numbers, uh, the existence of irrational numbers, basically invalidated key components of the Pythagorean philosophy. <laughs> and that was probably the first murder committed in the name of math. It's probably not the only murder committed in the name of math, but it's almost certainly the first. See, that's interesting. That's motivating. The sixth way that we ruin math for our students is by using patronizing materials. When we use materials that try to make the subject matter cool or more interesting by putting pictures of skateboarders on the cover or groups of laughing friends uh, having a good time, what we're actually communicating is not that the material is cool, but rather what we're communicating is that the material is so unbe unbelievably dull that the only way to make it palatable is to somehow try to improve it by, well, using pictures of skateboarders and uh, laughing teens holding guitars. It doesn't work. High school students are not stupid. They see right through this. And it doesn't make them like the material more. If anything, it makes them hate it. What we need to do instead is we need to treat our students like human beings made in the image of God and, and to treat them as serious thinkers. And the way we do that is by giving them real math, not trying to pretend like it's not dull, admitting the fact that sometimes it is. Sometimes it's very, very hard. But when you do this, and when you're honest with your students, uh, it gives them the correct expectations, and it can also motivate them. For example, in, my, in the curricula that I write, I use primary sources. I've read people uh, arguing that you shouldn't do this because the material is too dull and it's too difficult. But if you can show students, especially high school students, because we know that there's a little bit of a, a rebellious streak in all of them, because <laughs> we were once high school students, we know. Uh, if you can tell them that, look, people think you shouldn't be able to do this because it's too hard for you, well, when they're able to do it, you'll provide them with not only the satisfaction of having proven somebody wrong, but you will also inspire them. <laughs>